Right now, we continue to follow some of the exciting big changes happening at the Walker Center in downtown Salt Lake City. Oh, man, Bob, you're right. There are big changes you can see from miles away. Fox 13 News reporter Todd Tanner joins us from high atop the skyscraper tonight with an in-depth look at some of those changes. Hi again, Todd. Hi guys, that's right. This building that I'm standing on top of right now is over 100 years old and the sign on top that you're seeing right now is one of the most recognizable features of Salt Lake City. Its red and blue neon lights were flashing for decades beginning in the 1950s all the way up until a couple of months ago when suddenly the sign went dark and people were wondering what was going on. There was a lot of chatter about it on social media, but as you can see tonight, the lights are back on, but people were very curious and a little disturbed when everything was moving around. Come down, one more. We're gonna be taking down all the rest of the letters. Tonka Martinez and his crew have been busy. Uh, we're pretty close to two months now. For a while, it looked like the past was in pieces. The letters are back now, but by day, it's hard to see what changed. We have undertaken a, a re retrofitting of the uh, tower lights from uh, neon to LED. Raju Shah is with Vectra Management Group, which owns the walker. Uh, the tower now will be able to um, have any color under the rainbow. In the future, watch for the walker lights to turn pink in October for breast cancer awareness, a rainbow in June for pride events, and red, white, and blue for the 4th of July. Shaw says the new light system is an expansion of the walker building's history of sending signals to the greater community. And it transmitted the first television signal um, in the valley. Upon its completion in 1912, it was the tallest building between Chicago and San Francisco. The radio and TV tower went up in the 40s, but by the 1950s, the tower had become a weather center, and the forecast code has remained the same ever since. Blue, clear skies. Flashing blue, cloudy skies. Red, rain. Flashing red, snow. It's blinking sometimes, it's solid, other times and I think, well, there's the Walker Center, but I don't take it further than that. <laughs> David Amet is foggy on the code, but as the president of the Utah Heritage Foundation, he keeps a close eye on the Walker. And it's just become quite simply one of those icons of Salt Lake. And a close eye on history as his organization works tirelessly to preserve it. We love the old neon signs. When he first learned the letters were coming down, he was concerned. What they've done is they've created a, a sign that uh, really replicates that look, but then has this flexibility of acknowledging so much more than the weather. Having it reborn to, to live now uh, well into the 21st century and beyond is, is, I think, a great thing. All right, so two months to get all of that work done. Now, the Walker Center, as we mentioned, is over 100 years old. And the company that took care of the sign up there, Yesco, Young Electric Sign Company, they've been in Utah for over 100 years. So it was a perfect marriage for them to take care of the sign and all of the lights. They do all of the big casinos in Vegas. So, of course, they got this gig to light up the skies of Salt Lake City. Those LED lights are also going to be a lot more energy efficient. That was something that the building owners are here are excited about as well. And and they can do so many more colors than what you have already seen. 